Hello, dear students, and welcome to our Chapter 5, Stimulated Nuclear Reactions, Fission and Fusion for LH and SE Sections. By the end of the session, you will be able to relate the energy produced to the mass defect. Understand what a nuclear fission and what a nuclear fusion reactions are. Estimate the magnitude of the energy released in each reaction type. And give some examples on stimulated nuclear reactions. Now we all know that in each reaction there are reactants and products. In nuclear reactions, the total mass of the reactants is different from the total mass of the products. This is why we define the mass defect by delta M equals the mass before the reaction minus the mass after the reaction, which is often positive, meaning that the mass before is greater than the mass after. So where does this mass defect go? According to the mass energy equivalence of Einstein, this mass is converted into energy that appears mainly as a kinetic energy of the produced particles and nuclei. What I want to add is that a convenient unit that we will use in nuclear physics from now on is the electron volt with the kilo electron volt, the mega electron volt, and the giga electron volt. Now, what is a nuclear fission? A nuclear fission is a stimulated nuclear reaction, so it's not spontaneous like a nuclear decay reaction. And during this reaction, a heavy nucleus is divided into two lighter nuclei under the impact of a neutron. The incident neutron, to be able to cause fission, should have a moderate speed. So a speed that is around 2 kilometers per second and a kinetic energy that's around 0.02 electron volt. Because if the neutron is too slow, then it bounces back on the nucleus and if it is too fast then it goes through the nucleus without being captured now here are some examples of nuclear fission starting with this first one we have a uranium-235 nucleus that is hit by a neutron and then it will be divided into two lighter nuclei with the emission of three neutrons. Here is another example in which we get two neutrons. And here is a third one in which we can have three neutrons. On average, the fission of each uranium produces approximately 200 mega electron volt and this energy appears mainly as the kinetic energy of the two nuclei issued from the fission and as the gamma radiation energy emitted by the unstable nuclei that are formed by the fission. Now what is a chain reaction? This is an example of a chain reaction in which a uranium 235 nucleus is hit by a neutron. It is divided into two lighter nuclei with the emission of two neutrons. Each neutron is hitting another heavy nucleus and dividing it into two lighter nuclei and so on. The fission reaction liberates two or three neutrons and these neutrons are able in turn, as we just explained, to generate new fissions, provided they are slowed down, of course. Thus, a chain reaction is produced. Now, what is a nuclear fusion? 
Fusion is a stimulated nuclear reaction, so again it's not spontaneous, during which two light nuclei bind and form a heavier nucleus. Each of the nuclei involved in the nuclear fusion reaction has a positive electric charge and therefore they repel. So in order for them to get close enough and merge, they should have a great speed and this means that they should be in a place where the temperature is approximately equal to 100 million degrees. Let's give here some examples about the nuclear fusion which is at the origin of the radiation of the sun and the stars. For example, the tritium H13 can be obtained from the deuterium H12 that exists in water. Mainly, Water is constituted by H2O molecules, but also by D2O molecules that is called heavy water. And this is the corresponding equation in which we see two deuterium nuclei bind to give a tritium with a proton. Now, some reactions bind the form tritium, this one, to a deuterium a nucleus, liberating a great amount of energy. And this is the corresponding equation in which we can see the helium-24 as a product with uh, the neutron. And this figure represents the same reaction. This reaction produces approximately 17 mega electron volts, which is a huge amount of energy considering how small the masses of the reactants are. Now let's do an exercise from the national textbook. One of the uranium-235 nuclear fission reactions in a nuclear reactor is the following and they give us the equation. Then the first question is, determine the number X of neutrons and the number Y of electrons produced by this reaction, then write the corresponding reaction. To do this, we start by applying Sade's laws. The first law is the conservation of the mass number and we write it with X because it's X times one and zero because it's y times zero. Thus, x is equal to three. And the second law is the conservation of the atomic number. And it's written like this, with x times zero equals zero and y times minus one. And this is why we got minus y here. Thus, y is equal to six. The equation can be written in this way. Now the second question is calculate an atomic mass unit, then in kilogram, the loss of mass that occurs during this reaction with the masses that are given, including the mass of the neutron and neglecting the mass of the electron. What you see here, I just copied it from the previous slide because we're going to use it. So, to start, we will write the formula of the loss of mass or the mass defect, which is delta M is equal to the mass before minus the mass after. And we have all the masses, but we have to pay attention to this. Minus three mass neutron, because that we have three neutrons here, and minus six masses of or times the mass of the electron because we have six here. Now we know that the mass of the electron in this exercise is neglected. So we will remove it. And we calculate delta M and this is what we get in atomic mass unit. 
to convert it to kilogram we use what's given here and by multiplying this is what we get now C calculate in joule then in mega electron volt the released energy by the fission of one atom of uranium then deduce in joule the released energy by one gram of uranium given one mega electron volt is this we start by applying the mass energy equivalence using what we calculated already in the previous slide for delta m then this is what we get in joules to convert it to mega electron volt we divide it by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 and this is what we get in mega electron volt now these two values i remind you are the values of the energy that is released by the fission of one atom of uranium now to answer the second part of the question we need to know what the mass of a uranium nucleus is in kilogram then in gram by multiplying by 1.66 10 to the minus 27 then converting to gram now I want to remind you that this energy is released by one atom of uranium and this means by this mass to be able to find how much is released by one gram we just divide it by 3.9 times 10 to the minus 22 grams and this is what we get what are the types of the released energy we already explained it before and this energy appears as the kinetic energy of the two nuclei and of the particles in our case neutron and electron issued from the fission and as the gamma radiation energy emitted by the foreign unstable nuclei can this reaction lead to a chain reaction yes because the number of neutrons produced by this reaction is greater than one of course i want to remind you that these neutrons should be slowed down so they can generate new fissions for more training here are two links that you can use During this session, we learn to determine the mass defect, to determine the energy liberated by a nuclear reaction, to define a nuclear fission, and to define a nuclear fusion reactions. Thank you for watching. See you next time, and keep up the good work.